Good afternoon, and welcome to our Memorial Day service. My name is Bill McCreevy, and my family owns and operates Washburn McCreevy Funeral Chapels and Glenhaven Memorial Gardens. Memorial Day is observed the last Monday in May in honor of the nation's armed services personnel. It is also a time to honor those men and women who served our country so that we may enjoy the freedom we so greatly appreciate in America. Please rise and remain standing for the raising of the flags, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
That was beautiful, Arliss. Please be seated for the invocation by Reverend Dr. Lieutenant Colonel Randy Tabor, United States Air Force. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Arliss. I, I would like to be kind of a part of this um, organization, um, the arrangement of the um, Order of Service. I always get stuck after Arliss, and she's <laughs> such a wonderful job singing and brings that spirit that's ne so necessary sorry, to invoke the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I am so grateful for those who are present here that take time to um, pay respect, to honor and duty, a sense of integrity, service before self, and excellence in all things. We come in the spirit of a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting Father, and a Prince of Peace. Oh God, do give us clean hands, clean words, clean thoughts and deeds. Help us to stand for the hard right against the easy wrong. Save us from habits that harm and teach us to work as hard and play as fair in thy sight alone as of all the words saw. Forgive us when we are unkind and forgive those who are unkind to us and keep us ready to help others at some cost to ourselves. Send us chances to do a lot of good every day and to grow more like Christ. Bless this event and bless the Washburn McGreevy, the facilities here, and we, as we honor you during these moments, these brief moments of tribute, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Randy. I would now like to invite all of those that have served in the military to please stand and be recognized. Thank you for serving our country and making the sacrifices that you have for our freedom. Please join together as we sing, My Country Tis of Thee. The words can be found on the back of your program. This time, a wreath of flowers in memory of all veterans will be placed by Lisa Sundberg, Auxiliary President, and Charles R. Knabley, VFW Post 494, Crystal, Minnesota. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on this special Memorial Day. I'm honored to be here to share, reflect, and remember all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for you and me and our country. On a somber day in April of 1915, a battle-weary Canadian soldier viewed the final resting place of thousands of young men who had fallen in 
the second battle in Belgium. Despondently, he contemplated the rows of hastily dug graves, each marked by a lonely white cross. At that time, he suddenly heard a revelation of singing larks in the sky and amid the graves. He saw small patches of wild red poppies struggling through the battle-torn soil on mounds of clay, of the graves, striving to bring a message, their message of life through their sacrifice of death. This was inspired by Colonel John McCray, who sat down and penned three short verses of his heartfelt famous poem in Flanders Field. This was published in a magazine a few months later. The poem brought a message of hope and confidence to millions of people in one of the darkest days of World War I. Although Colonel McCrae never lived to see the end of World War I, his poem has survived in print and is in the minds and hearts of generations to whom his personal battle was mere history. The poppies which provided his inspiration still bloom on Flanders fields, and by their message of hope, has become reality through the veterans of foreign wars, Buddy Poppy. After more than a century, and today, the poppy still brings its message of hope to those who have borne the brunt of battle and keeping with its pledge to honor the dead by helping the living. The Buddy Poppy, they're assembled every day of the year by veterans in veterans' homes throughout the United States. The work provides therapy for hands and minds crippled by ravages of war. Volunteers of the VFW and Auxiliary continue to dedicate the profits to the aid and assistance of the disabled, the needy service men and women, veterans, widow, orphans of the deceased veterans. So I ask of you today to kindly accept the symbol of the sacrifice of a red poppy from our dedicated volunteers of Cub Scout Troop 403. And don't break the faith, wear it proudly, for they sacrifice the ultimate for you and I. I will share the famous poem that Colonel John McCrae wrote 100 years ago today. <laughs> In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks so bravely sing and fly. Scarce and scarce, heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, we felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If you break the faith with us who died, we shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders fields. Colonel John McCray. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm here today to talk just a little bit about the Beyond the Yellow, or Quad Community Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Initiative and what it means for the soldiers and families who reside in our communities. A couple years ago when we started this, people had asked me, what is the difference between Yellow Ribbon and Beyond the Yellow Ribbon? Well, the Yellow Ribbon is essentially a, a group of seminars that the military offers service members who are coming home from a deployment. They're voluntary seminars, and they kind of focus on faith-based and family relationship counseling, resume writing and job interviewing skills, and fiscal uh, responsibility. 
Once those seminars conclude and the soldiers return home, there isn't much more opportunity for additional direct near, uh, peer support from their military partners. The Minnesota National Guard recognized that while the Yellow Ribbon Seminars helped ease the transition for our soldiers, at times, once the soldiers were home, they still found themselves in a position where they needed additional resources. So the Minnesota National Guard did a little bit of research, and they came up with a program what we, uh, called the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon. In about 2011, 2012, a crystal soldier who had returned from two or three different deplo deployments overseas approached our city council and said, you know, would you please look into this Beyond the Yellow Ribbon program? It's really important for our soldiers when they're home to know that their community stands behind them and supports them. So together with uh, Crystal, along with Golden Valley, New Hope, and Robbinsdale, we decided to join forces, work through the steps of becoming Beyond the Yellow Ribbon communities. And as many of you know, now that as you're uh, driving around our communities, you see the signs uh, by the population signs letting you know that we are official Beyond the Yellow Ribbon communities. It should be noted that while the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon initially was designed to help returning soldiers, it has now evolved over the years to include all service members, no matter their date of service to our country. I just wanted to share with you a few types of assistance um, that we have received. Our committee, we meet once a month and we continue to uh, partner with local businesses, public safety agencies, EMS agencies, medical clinics, schools, service organizations, hospitals, financial institutions, and churches, so that as we do receive requests from community members, we have a good, solid network in place to try to help them. We had a soldier this last fall that moved into our community. He recently returned from deployment, went through a divorce, received full custody of his 10-year-old son. He moved here from Arizona, and he was working part-time. He hadn't found a full-time job yet. And at Christmas time, he kind of ran across his son's wish list. And the father was li living with friends and family, but his son had asked for a bed, just a bed. The soldier wanted nothing for himself, but he didn't have the funds to purchase his kid a bed. He reached out to the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon. He just, he said, I don't want anything for myself, just some help trying to buy a bed. So our Yellow Ribbon, we were able to uh, provide the bed, pillows, bedding. We got, we got the child some uh, winter clothing, and we also purchased gift cards uh, for food and Target for the father, in case he needed it. Military Assistance Center also reached out to us this past year and gave us a list of veterans in the community who, although really didn't ask for anything, the Assistance Center said, I know we know of some things. We have an elderly veteran that just needs a winter cloak, winter gloves. One wanted a, a gift card just so he could afford to get a haircut. So we were able to help, help with those items too. We had a veteran in our com a community recently who was blessed to have a child born, maybe a little bit early. There was some uh, medical uh, challenges that the family had to overcome besides uh, having the newborn. They had to take a little time off work and they just needed a little temporary help with rent to get them through the, the rough spot. A side note, you know, we can't help with every problem, but we're positioned to help with a great many in the community. As a little note about the boy who got the bed, the father recently wrote to us and said he has found a full-time, good full-time job. The dad and son have found a permanent place to live in St. Anthony, and they're both doing well. I guess, you know, in conclusion, um, I would be remiss if I didn't help the many volunteers that spend countless hours with networking so that we can offer this Yellow Ribbon program in our community. So from Golden Valley, I definitely want to um, thank Marshall Tannock and Lynn Zeba, Robbinsdale, George Selman and, and John Zeba, New Hope, Mayor Kathy Hemken, and Crystal, uh, Jim Adams. Joni Clausen is another person in Golden Valley who helps tremendously. We meet month in and month out to continue to develop our network.
And lastly, to all the, the, the partners that, that uh, joined with us, I would like to thank Washburn McGreevy for allowing us to share our story about the Anila Ribbon, Crystal VFW Post 494, Ride for Freedom Motorcycle Group, the Women's Auxiliary in Crystal and Robbinsdale, Crystal Lions Club, Robbinsdale Lions Club, Golden Valley Sons of the American Legion, Blue Star Mothers, and countless local businesses and residents who have donated either time or money. Without your partnerships, we wouldn't be able to help as many veterans as we do in our community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minnesota Brassworks, for the beautiful musical selection. It is now my privilege to introduce a great family friend, Dennis Scholstrad, Brigadier General, United States Air Force, retired. Denny. Thank you, Bill. I'm always pleased to be here. The McGreevy family are very dear friends of ours for many, many years, and they always do such a fine job of Memorial Day, of remembering the men and the women who have given their lives in defense of our country. We're a peace-loving nation. We're a peace-loving nation that's experiencing an experiment in democracy and in freedom. You know, every civilization has been conquered throughout mankind. And ours has been in existence now for 250 years, but we hope it will continue forever. But during this time, we've had a dozen wars to defend those freedoms, 
and 1.2 million people have given their lives in defense of them. 1.2 million is three times the population of the city of Minneapolis, to put it in perspective. 75 years ago, we almost lost those freedoms. We almost were conquered by Nazi Germany. Is there anybody here who served in World War II? Raise your hand. Right here, right here, over here. Let's give them, and back there, a huge, huge round of applause. They not only saved our freedom, they saved the world. They saved the world. I've recently been over in Europe, going through Germany, seeing some of the sites that my dad, as a bomber pilot in World War II, was bombing. Now we were visiting as friends and allies. It's remarkable that that can happen in 75 years. But we also went to the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, there's a cemetery, much like this one. And it has 8,301 graves of American, American soldiers. They died liberating Holland. But what's so unique about it is that every one of those 8,301 graves has been adopted by a family from the Netherlands. They never knew that person, but they have a photograph hanging in their home and they personally go out and take care of that grave. They have adopted that family or that serviceman. And what we have to remember is that every time, every one of these 1.2 million people had a family at home who grieves for them when they passed away. I sometimes wonder about the young people of today, who their heroes are. Is it a, an entertainer? Is it a singer? Is it an athlete? Well, I'll tell you who a real hero is. A real hero is our speaker today. It's not an American idol. It's an American hero. Lieutenant George Lancaster graduated from the University of Kansas. He was a lieutenant in the Marine Corps. He was stationed in Vietnam. On Christmas Day, Christmas Day, while we were all at home celebrating with our families, in 1965, he was in deep, deep trouble. I want to read part of a citation that was given to him about his actions on that Christmas day in 1965. Pinned down by heavy machine gun fire, they immediately sustained three casualties, one of which was critically wounded. Seeing that the corpsman and another Marine were having difficulty moving the casualty to a protected area, Lieutenant Lancaster, without hesitation, courageously moved from a protected area himself through a hail of bullets to their assistance. As they were evacuating the wounded man, the Marine helping him was wounded in the head. Lieutenant Lancaster left the Marine he was carrying and with the help of the corpsman moved the newly wounded man to a protected area for treatment. Leaving the corpsman, he again boldly moved through the devastating fire and evacuated the remaining casualty. On behalf of the President of the United States, Lieutenant Lancaster was awarded the Bronze Star for heroism. This is a hero. And three weeks later, just three weeks after that, he was again under heavy fire, and he deliberately left the safety of the trench that he was in. And that was to adjust some artillery fire. He was seriously wounded in the leg and in the hand, but he didn't give up. He successfully completed his mission and relieved his men of intense incoming fire. For that action, the Secretary of the Navy awarded him the Navy Commendation Medal. But like so many soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, he wasn't a warrior. He wasn't raised to be a warrior. He had just graduated from college. 
And when he was discharged, he came back home, completed a master's degree, and had 39 successful years in the insurance industry as the Vice President of Regional Affairs. He has contributed to our nation, both defending it as a hero and as a person who's building our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true American hero, Lieutenant George, George Lancaster. Oh my, what a beautiful day. Isn't it wonderful to be alive, to be able to enjoy it? Thank you all for being here. Your presence honors and respects all those who've gone before us. Uh, we've been gathering in cemeteries like this for a long time to remember the loved ones that have gone before us. As a young boy, uh, my mother would tell me about decorating graves when she was a little girl, 100 years ago, 1916. There were still Civil War veterans alive in those days and uh, they had uh, just left the battlefields of uh, the Civil War in the 1860s, and 50 years later, they were in their 70s, and my mother remembered them as being very old. Well, I left the uh, battlefields of Vietnam in, 19, in the 1960s, 100 years after the 1860s, and then 50 years later, now I'm in my 70s, and I'm sure my grandchildren think that I'm very old. 50 years ago today, May 30, 1966, I was home on leave from Navy Hospital in Oakland, California, where I was going through a series of procedures to get my legs uh, moved, working properly. Uh, it was a beautiful day, warm and balmy like today. Uh, I was enjoying my time with my family as we decorated the graves of grandparents and great-grandparents. The next thing I knew, I was looking out at my aunts and uncles and my cousins as they looked at me crouched behind a tombstone. It seems that the American Legion rifle squad had just fired off a 21-gun salute in another part of the cemetery, and my reflexes were still pretty quick. <laughs> so again, we gathered, remember, and honored all of those that we have loved. And we placed a flag on the grave of every veteran. It's good that we should remember all of those who have gone before us and all that they've done for us. But this is not just about honoring our loved ones. And Veterans Day is for honoring all veterans. No, this day is more specific. It's about honoring those who were killed in our country's wars. You know anyone who was killed in combat? If you do, I hope you think of that person or those persons now. If you don't personally know anyone, let me tell you about Fernando Seda Jr. And let him be representative of all those who've been killed in our country's wars. Who is Fernando Seda? Remember that Denny said, that read that citation, it says, as they were evacuating the wounded man, the Marine helping him was wounded in the head. His data sheet reads, Fernando Seda Jr., Lance Corporal, personal data, home of record, New York, New York, date of birth, March 20, 1946, military data, service, United States Marine Corps, grade at loss, E3, rank, Lance Corporal, ID number 2076386, MOS 0311, Rifleman, length of service 01, unit M Company 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, 3rd Marine Division. Casualty data, date of casualty, December 25, 1965. Incident date, December 25, 1965. Agent loss, 19. Location, Quang Tin Province, South Vietnam. Remains, body recovered. Casualty type, hostile, died outright. Casual reason, ground fire. What day was it? It was Christmas Day, 1965, 50 years ago. He was just 19 years old, a Puerto Rican kid from New York City. I think of him often, especially on Christmas Day, when I look at my children and grandchildren and realized that Fernando didn't have that chance. Nor did he have the opportunities, privileges, and joys that I've enjoyed over the past 50 years. Fernando just won, but he's representative of all the others. They were all young, they were all different, 
They come every. They came from every part of the country. They had names like Smith and Jones, D. Benedetto, Gustafson, Funkhauser, Sharnitsky, Reichenbach, Rodriguez. They had every color of skin and ethnic origin. But they were all Americans, and they fought for their company, country. Today, let's see. Today, there's still differences among us. Different skin colors, ethnic groups, countries of ancestral origin, male and female, rich and poor, well-educated and not well-educated. There are forces that try to divide us and then pit one group against another. But we're all Americans. Regardless of whether your ancestors came across a land bridge from Asia 13,000 years ago, by wooden ship from Europe 400 years ago, by slave ship from Africa, from Asia, South America, Mexico, or by jet plane from Somalia in the 1990s, we're all Americans. In Lincoln's Gettysburg Address 150 years ago, he said, it is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus so far nobly, so far have nobly advanced. It's rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we shall take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we are here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this government uh, under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Today, 150 years later, we're still a work in progress, and it's up to each of us to honor those who gave their life in combat and didn't have the ability to enjoy the lives that we have. We can honor them by working together with all Americans continue to make this a great country in which to live. We can honor them by being responsible citizens, by doing our part, by building on the talent and traditions that newcomers and new arrivals have and instilling them a sense of being an American. By remembering John Kennedy's challenge, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. By helping, by raising our children to be good citizens, to ensure that they're well educated and prepared to take their place as citizens of this great country. By helping others who are less fortunate, by ensuring that every American has an opportunity for a good education and the ability to pursue their dreams. By respecting each other, by working together for the common good. We can honor them by conducting our lives with honor, courage, fair play, and civility. We can honor them by doing everything we can so that when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, it truly is one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. And I have 
please be seated. Thank you very much, Arliss. I just love that line in there from the lakes of Minnesota. That's incredible. We made the song. At this time, I'd like to introduce somebody who I'm very, very fond of, and we're going to deviate just slightly in the order of service today here. And uh, he has been a part of the family business for a very long time, and I'll let him tell you more about that. But uh, at the age of 17, his father died unexpectedly, and he was thrown into the family business, and he's been a visionary for Washburn McCreevy and for our cemeteries like Glen Haven Memorial Gardens here ever since. And uh, this was one of his visions as well here, this Veterans Memorial. It's actually the largest privately owned Veterans Memorial in the state of Minnesota. And uh, at one point it was just green grass and nothing else, and uh, he had the vision to, to recognize our veterans and uh, give this tribute to them. So at this time I'd like to introduce my father, Bill McCravey Sr. Thank you. If you'll take your program and look at the cover, and take a look at the monument, and you'll see what happened in this last year. And I think I told you last year we were going to do something to start expanding the monument. So you see this wing over here and this wing over here. It was not here last year. So we, this probably, in fact, someone told me this today, and I'd like to check this out, is probably the smallest or maybe the largest privately owned monument for veterans in the United States. I've been very fortunate in my life. I have a wonderful wife. She's standing right over there, sitting right over there somewhere. Stand up, Kay, let them see who you are. <laughs> sitting alongside of her is my daughter, my oldest daughter. I have a daughter just under her by the name of Sandra, who is husband, and she lived in Centerville, Virginia, and he works for home security for the United States. Then I have an older son, the oldest in our family, as far as our children, by the name of Don, and he's a minister in Logan, Colorado. So we've been very blessed with our family, and from that point, we go into our grandchildren. I have, my wife and I have 11 grandsons. <laughs> Four of them are standing over here right now. You'll see all four of them line up together there. Eleven grandsons and no granddaughters. But I did, one thing did happen. We had a great grandson, and now we got three great granddaughters. So we, we lucked out. But we've been very fortunate and uh, with our health, and we are uh, just happy that we put this program on and I'm hoping next year that you will tell your neighbor, come on out and listen to our program out here at Glen Haven. We try to do something every year to make Glen Haven a better facility than it is. So far we're doing that, I think, pretty good. And I'm certainly happy that my oldest grandson there, uh, Jonathan, he happens to be in charge of all four of our cemeteries. And I think he does a real good job here with the team. Now I think to sort of wind this up, I want to make sure that you're all invited to go into the funeral chapel in the reception room there and receive some cookies and, and punch and uh, celebrate and just relax and enjoy a few people as you're here today. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. At this time, we'd ask that you please rise for the benediction and salute to the honored dead. coordinated the flyover. <laughs> wave at those folks. You want to make sure and go in and grab those cookies because some of you didn't go in last year and, and uh, Bill McGreevy sent those cookies over to, to our church. <laughs> and we've been riding the sugar high for the last year. So, you know, this has been a very personal event and I'd like to have you maybe um, grab the hand of the person next to you or so. You never know if that, that stranger, stranger is really experiencing some sense of deep loss and grief at this time. 
And if you feel uncomfortable grabbing the hand of the person next to you, just grab a total stranger's hand. <laughs> and shall we, shall we pray? We ask, O oh Lord, that you've blessed us in so many ways today. And how can we um, truly remember the courage, the quality, and the sacrifice of the fallen on Memorial Day? Every Memorial Day, the question of how to remember those that fell, defending our nation, challenges us because the question of how to remember is, is so simple and ultimately so heart-rendering and difficult. The loss of any soldier, sailor, marine, or airman is a devastating loss to the country. The family that raised them, the community that served as the foundation of their character. And what I find the most troubling on Memorial Day is that in the end, we too often only remember the physical, physical sacrifices that results in the death of the military member. We need to hold dear the memory of the values, the character, and the essence of the person that fell defending America. And on this Memorial Day, we need to remember the courage, sacrifice, dedication, and physical prowess of the steps that those military members took to reach the point to where they fell. To appreciate the sacrifice in battle, we need to appreciate the courage that it took in each of their steps to reach the point in battle where they fell. And before they were remembered on Memorial Day, they were playful toddlers, small toddlers, seemingly in, in redeemable, unredeemable rascals that may have climbed trees, played sports, and stayed out too late after dark, and studied hard in school to get good grades for a bright future. They were also different races, different ethnicities, and spoke different languages, and from across American and different backgrounds. Military personnel are united in the common color of their uniform of green and white and tan. They walked, marched, ran, swam, and crawled through their military training and initial experiences in the military. In the end, they continued to go forward until they could not go forward anymore. The steps that they took in their final days alive truly represent the courage and integrity that we try to, try to remember on Memorial Day. Those that fell were donned with parachutes, put on oxygen masks, wore life jackets, laced up boots as they went about their duties, cleaning rifles, readying machine guns, lead, loading can, cannons, and preparing rockets on ships and planes and tanks and trucks. They were every conceivable combination of scared, scared and brave and cold and hot and tired and rested and hungry, fed, sick and healthy. And no matter the difficulty of conditions, they paid it no matter and stepped forward to do their duty for themselves, their comrades and their communities. And in their last days and in their initial moments, they took steps to constantly move forward and to serve. And after they fell and were mourned, their families continued their lives of courage and took steps to recover and move forward. They were of those, and there were jobs to do, children to, to raise, lives to continue, and communities to embrace. The families of the fallen had to continue the courage of their daily steps with a separate and a distinct bravery that was equal as part of honor, compassion, love, and dedication. And as we close this service, we begin our lives we remember those that fell by recalling the entirety of their steps they took in their lives from children, from toddlers, to the day they fell as soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. The, the memories, O oh Lord, of the fallen military members must be seen in the quality and the character of their entire lives, not only their last day in combat. And on Memorial Day, we must remember both the fallen and their families, because this is how we truly understand and appreciate and respect their sacrifices and dedication to America and its communities and to us. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all very much and have a very blessed Memorial Day. Thank you.